So the idea today is really to talk about something that most of you, hopefully all of you, but I'm not sure, uh, are aware of, or at least as a user, or at least you, you had to uh, tackle those questions somehow during your you know, uh, first degree, second degree, PhD, postdoc, whatever. So this is uh, all about sequence alignment. I'll go through very fast through some definitions. Then we'll, uh, I'll give you the intuition for how to do, to move from sequence alignments, which is a pairwise, to a database search, which is, as you know, BLAST, and a little bit more than that. And then maybe if uh, we have time, I'll tell you something about where are the traps, where are the source of mistakes, and the hard cases, and so on. I'm sure that uh, during your homework, you'll end up finding some hard cases, mistakes, and so on. So let's uh, start going. So I, I, I start with something that I repeat myself every time, but I'll do it in one slide or two slides, just to say that there are, although we teach you to go through a specific route in terms of data and data sources, remember, just remember, because each of you has a different niche of expertise that you have more than the one that we uh, talked so much about, which is the gene bank. And the gene genomic, we have a generic uh, sequences we talked about, organism-based. Uh, we didn't talk about that, but usually they are, in a sense, better because they have more combination, more variation. It's not that they have more genes, but the diversity is higher. So if you are expert in yeast, there is a beautiful yeast resource and so on. There is, of course, what we haven't even touched, the tissue-specific resources, if you are interested in liver or in ovary or whatever. Then you have what we discussed uh, quite extensively, the Uniprot story, the Tremble story, the GenePEP, which I mentioned, and the PDB, which is a structural base that we happen to, we will probably be introduced later on, but not, uh, so, so this is just to say that there are more than one resource to get into molecular sequences. And when I say molecular, it could be RNA, microRNA, genome, genes, and so on. Okay? Done. Second point, it's all about evolution. What I mean by that? Sequences are related, because sometimes we just do it technically and we don't think about the source of all of it. Sequences are related, and uh, I don't have to go back to Darwin, but it's all written there, that indeed everything that we see is a, an, a, an outcome of a descent uh, organism by du duplication, you know, like new generation, and modification, which is in other way to say mutation, variation, mistakes, and so on. This is, this is evolution. This is the essence of molecular evolution, or everything that we are going to do, we have to remember this uh, uh, basis. So, of course, what this means is that related molecules have similar or potentially similar function, and definitely uh, uh, different or similar function and often similar structure even that they are in different organisms. And this is just because of this uh, tree of life. The phylogenetic tree is a very good uh, uh, resource to know, to, to, to play with relation between, you know, species uh, uh, which is in the same uh, branch or in different branches. Okay, this is a very classical example that I like because it tells us mainly everything. Ignore the numbers, which are less important. But what you see here is the million years of, a, a, let's say, evolution. And then you see the kind of we trace back the history of what happened. And I, I'm sure that many of you have seen such a, a graph or such a presentation in which you have a split and then another split. And each split is a duplication. So those are duplicated and duplicated in the end. What we are seeing now, let's say, in human, or in mouse, or in a, a whale, we see those type of uh, uh, variation, which is a old duplication. So if we compare the sequence of this and this, basically we trace back to this node. If we go from this to this, to this node. So it's not 
if you think about this as a guideline, it's not surprisingly uh, that those are more related than this and that, okay? So this is just the intuition, okay? So we have uh, this, and pair, pairwise alignment, it's the most, uh, I would say, basic uh, uh, story for today. And just to uh, make sure that all the terms are clear, we can talk about similarity. Similarity is quantitative measure, which is usually measured by percentage. So this is 96% uh, similar, okay? So it's a, but there is no evolution so story implicit in this uh, wording. So two things might be similar, not because they came from the same ancestor gene, okay? So that's important. The second term that I want to mention is identical. Identical is very clear. Identic identical just means that it's the same. So not similarity, not percentage. It's uh, yes or no, identical or not. Again, no history. However, when we speak about homologs, we already implicitly uh, say that it's originated from a common ancestor. And usually you cannot say it's 90% homolog. It's either a homolog or not. Because either you trace the evolutionary uh, story that I showed you or not. But we could, of course, <coughs> uh, of course talk about remote homolog, close homolog, but in a very smooth kind of uh, uh, soft uh, language. Just to say that um, a lot of what we uh, uh, talk about pairwise alignment or in alignment in general uh, means that when we have A that is similar to B and B that is similar to C, we can infer somehow that A is similar to C. But of course, this is just a little bit theoretical, just to say, but this is something that think about it when you do uh, sequence alignment, because of course, not always A is indeed related to C. It could be because of some chaining event. A is similar to B because some pieces in the sequence and B is similar to C because the other sequence patch in the sequence, therefore A is not similar to C. So just remember when we talk about this, there is here a, a internal trap and uh, I'll give you an example of this. So what for? I think it's very obvious. Um, even we talked quite a lot about NGS. So NGS to do the alignment, you have to know which piece comes with which piece. So you must have this alignment, but also, of course, when you have uh, sequences, you want to know their similarity, they are identical, uh, you want to find mutation, you want to do, to say this region is more conserved than other, you want to find the evolutionary rate, you want to understand how to design protein, and they are basically, what I say is, I don't know of any biological question that is not at the level of the organism per se, like, uh, I don't know, ecology or whatever, that is not related to one of those qu questions. This is why it's so fundamental. So on sequence similarity, homology we just talked about, orthologs are homologs within a, a, in different organism, and paralogs are homologs within the same organism as a result of gene duplication usually. Okay, this is just not to confuse that. I think most of you are familiar with those terms. Is it so? Okay, good. Okay, so gene duplication is obvious. Now, uh, uh, where are the changes coming from? Again, I'm talking about the biology behind, not just the technology uh, that we are talking about. So it all comes from changes in, uh, of uh, mutation. Mutation could be one nucleotide, Mutation can be an insertion, can be a deletion, can be insertion and deletion. We call it indel, just for the terms that uh, we'll use uh, quite often. Okay. Now, after we went through resources and through evolution principle, let's go to pairwise alignment. So <clears throat> what we want to do when we try to uh, do alignment is to maximize the level of identity of, in this case, two sequences. And in order to do this, we have to take into account three elements. First of all, or, or that are ma marked here, the range of the alignment, how long it is, how many matches and mismatches in, you know, 
identical, this is identical, this is identical, identical, not identical. Mismatch, we call it. And what is the situation with the gap? Like opening and, and uh, shortening and so on. So it's all done to maximize this. Um, again, uh, this is, uh, so le let's just uh, take this sequence that I just show you and show you how you do uh, a line of two sequences. So we have these sequences, and of course there is no one solution to this. So if we, we, didn't ha we don't have the time to practice this uh, explicitly, but if I let you just this sequence and tell each of you to align, probably we'll get more than one solution. So this is just solution one and two. What's the difference between the two? It's quite obvious. Here we have alignment and quite a few of mismatch. And here we have maybe less mismatch, but we open the gap. And the question is, which one maximize whatever we want? Now, it's all depend on what? You know, I, I, I need to keep going with the slide. So what, what is missing here? It's a scoring system, right? Exactly. So how can I know if I do not know how much penalty I have to pay for mismatch or to gap and so on? So that's the old trick. The old trick is really, first of all, to understand that there is not a single solution to start with. And second, we can just count, saying here we have 10 matches, three mismatches. Here we have 12 matches, two gaps, right? If we count this and this. So which alignment is better? And again, let's put numbers. So if we say the match is plus one, the mismatch is minus one, and we just say that they are the same direction and the indel is really bad, is minus two, whatever, something like that, then you can immediately calculate, right? It's the same calculation, that uh, the same sequence that I showed you before. It's 12 of one, two of minus two. So in this case, I would say that this is the right one. Who believed that I made a mistake? Yes, yes, that, that's okay. I can make, yeah, many of you. And you are right, why? What, what I didn't take into account? Uh, say it. So wh wh why, I, I also think that this is not better than that, but it's my guess, right? Why? Because the mismatches are much less than... Okay, exactly, so... Yeah, very, very good, exactly. So indeed, I think also that uh, mismatch is, is, is a dramatic event. Dramatic event because it can really uh, definitely, let's say evolutionary, let's say it changed the coding and it put it out of frame, let's say, or even if it's not coding, it's just event that happened more than once and so on. So indeed, so here is a different scoring method. Again, I don't think it's a good one, but just to say this is plus one, this is, I'm not paying to mismatch, which is something that, and I keep the minus two, and here, when you do, you have this, and, and uh, sorry, if you go to the second one, you have a different scaling, so it becomes to be this one. Again, so the point, to summarize, it's very sensitive to those parameters, which are the, the, the match, the mismatch, and the indel payment. So, again, this is a more So, uh, okay. Uh, can you, can you, uh, maybe go? That's it? Okay. No, no. Great. So, uh, let's say we, we are trying to do a alignment, and this is again. The, the, the score, you can definitely see that if you open a lot of those uh, gaps, you can have this calculation, and, but it's all about counting, right? That, that's, that's the point that I wanted to say. And of course, we need to go to the biological causes of the mismatch. And the biological co co causes of mismatch is again exactly the intuition that we shared. This is rather common. This is rather non-common. 
Why is that? Because it reflects the event of two or maybe four different events in the same small sequences. And it's all about this. We shouldn't remember when we talk about this numbering that what's behind, I'm trying to say it loud, even louder. Uh, what's behind is this mechanism. And we have to understand where and how mistakes occur. So once we understand that, then we can model better our scoring. Got it? That's an important comment. OK. So knowing the mechanism of duplication of any of the event. Now, yes, please. So, so of course, I'm hiding quite a lot. And maybe we'll talk a little bit later about it. But in general, let's say that uh, um, let's say it's a coding region, just for saying. And let's say evolutionary, this, uh, there was one mistake, one uh, mismatch. But these amino acids have changed anyway. So it doesn't matter if you change the second and the third. So there is this evolutionary driving force that there is no selection on this anymore. So it's more, it will happen more than by, you know, the, the three in a row. It's just a change of amino acids, which can be one, two, or three. It's the same almost. You know, depends on the order and what happened. So what I'm saying, there is this underlying, what I'm, when I say it's common, when I say, I, I mean, it's common if you compare human and rodent to find those elements of three amino acids, uh, three nucleotides that have been changed, because the outcome is a change of one amino acid, but if it's a coding region. But to open, it, it's huge. It's a framework, a frame shift, and so on. To open one and two, uh, although, again, we can be more delicate about this, because it could be that you open one, and two, and a, a, a little bit later, you included one. So you fix it somehow. So there is another s subtlety that I'm not talking about. But you are right. I mean, I have to justify it. It's not just uh, so dealing with gap. It's exactly part of this uh, discussion. The biological uh, 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 cause of gap are quite a lot. Like uh, uh, any single mutation can uh, do it crossover, unequal crossover, DNA slippage, DNA is running, and then tuck, tuck, tuck is going back, and then do another. So this is an event that happened quite a lot. So slippage is to, to add x number in one event. So this is why it can change on gap. And translocation of DNA between chromosome and so on, all of these are less common than events that lead to single mutation. That needs to be a remember. OK. So now we have to think about the gap. Do you think that this gap and this gap should be the same? No. Why? You, you said no, and I agree with you. But is it, this is 10, let's say 20. Is it 20 times more than that? If I want to, to get a feeling for the payment, for the penalty, you would say that this is exactly 20? No. Less? It should be less? Yes. yes. OK, so your, your intuition is right. It's an, a dramatic event to open, but to extend, it's a less dramatic event. So we have to pay not only for the opening, but for the opening and another penalty for the length of the opening. OK? So this is why the model become richer. Because we are not just say mismatch, not mismatch, mismatch and extending of a gap. Okay, it's a different numbers. Okay, so w indeed we have gap opening, gap extension. That's the formal uh, terms. Gap ending. So if a gap is in the end, it's a different than in it is in the middle. You can understand this from let's say protein point of view. And gap separation is also another small parameter. What is the chance that one gap will be next to you know, a gap, no gap, gap, no gap, no gap? Or there must be at least 50 in between. So this is another penalty that you, you can account. So the model becomes richer when you really understand the biology better. And the biology doesn't have to be identical if you talk about human or bacteria. So you have to be clever enough to assign 
the correct parameter to your question. Okay? Now, fortunately, there is a default that is based on uh, a lot of experience and a lot of refinement. And part of the art of finding uh, sequence alignment is by changing the parameters in the way you think it should. Yes, please. Yeah, so by now it's a general and I'm going there. I'm going there to the protein story, which is different than the, uh, than the DNA story. Here I just want to make one point. This is amino acid and the uh, convention is that if it's identical, it's double two dots. And if it's similar, whatever is similar I will we'll talk about, it's one dot. And if it's not, uh, there is no dot. So V to C, there is no dot. But the point is, that uh, bef before going, sorry, before going to, to this, I just want to mention that this is a very poor indication, saying 40% identity. We don't know it's a 40% in one patch with no gaps at all, or it's a 40% spread all over. Or so, so, of course, you already understand that this is not enough to say the percent of identity uh, it doesn't say that much about without looking and giving more information on what we see as an outcome. Like I, really you want to say that 40 identity and has its new patch and why gaps? And then For example, or what is the score that I got? How, how amazing is my score? The same calculation that I did before. But the score itself? Yeah. It's, it's so depend on length and so on. Yeah, 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 of course. It's dependent. So, so we'll go into it. So to the, the definition on uh, how you, we do alignment. Either we do it global or you, we do it local. What's the difference? This is a global one because from the beginning to end, we align. So we have to scratch the sequence accordingly. And this is a local. So it's the same sequence, but now we have a patch, a small patch that is high quality. So of course, the scores are very much dependent on this uh, decision. So as I said, this is the definition end to end for the global. And this is very important for some cases, but less important for others. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, this is just a short example. This is the local. When you do two sequences, we just find the local patch that extending it will reduce the score. Remember the maximization of the score that we talked about, okay? So again, so uh, um, uh, there is biological logic to use global and local. We don't have time to discuss it uh, deeply, but just to show you two, two cases in which either of those have some pitfalls, okay? So for example, when you do local and you just uh, uh, assign this with this, it could be uh, uh, that this has another similarity to this and to this, and right? So it's not a one solution. Of course, when you do global and you have a small protein with a perfect match and you have to assign it to global, you'll break it because you have to keep doing it, right? And this would not work because there is a huge difference in length between the two. And by definition, global means they have the same length in the end. And indeed, a lot of uh, programs are falling uh, short and they are not that good because the definition of local and global might be uh, not taken care of. So despite the perfect algorithm, some, somehow if they are stuck with global or local, they could be uh, misleading, especially in those cases. So this is just last example. The example shows us that this is, for example, you know, the two sequences are related. No, no question. Now, this is a good alignment with end gap. So I'm not paying. Remember that we talked about the gap in the end? I'm not paying much or at all for the edges. So if it's in the end, no problem. Why? Because, uh, uh, you know, you can see the benefit of it. I have a perfect, almost perfect alignment. Here, on the other hand, I had to do a global one. But as you can see, it's only 50% because I had to open quite a lot of spots here. And of course, it can be more dramatic if the length, the, the differences in length would be much larger. 
But even in this example, I think it's very obvious why sometimes you need to. So this is another point that gap are not penalized only by opening, only by extension, but also in their location. OK, so that's another uh, element. That's it. So one, one thing that uh, exactly goes to your comment, there are many good reasons to do translation. Those sequences we know nothing about as if, right? Because who knows, coding, promoter, and answer. So we don't have, but if we did translation, we have many, many more constraints if indeed this is a coding sequence. And why is that? Because, of course, we understand the genetic code and we understand the ability to absorb a lot of mutation without changing the protein, and because of the biochemistry of amino acids, which are different. So just to summarize this, uh, the, the DNA, before I'm moving to protein, uh, I just say that up to now, we did it in a very naive way. We say any change, it's either perfect or mismatch, right? That's how we calculate. Now I want to add another small uh, uh, addition that, amino, that nucleotide are not changed in the same proportion or in the same tendency. So it's, it's much harder, it's much more dramatic to change a purine to pyrimidine than the pyrimidine to pyrimidine. So this is not included in our, our model, right? So this is a better model. And this is actually what uh, people are using. So each and every change or each and every uh, 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 substitution got a score. And as you can see, the scores are rather different. So they could be minus uh, uh, 10, but they could be minus 5. OK, so again, when you do this and you try to align, you go exactly to the same calculation that we did before, and you just add those penalties according to what we see here. This is exactly what people are doing if indeed they want to be more exact and they know something about this, right? Because it's very much sensi sensitive to the CG content to the and so on. Whether it's UV, not UV, I, I, I don't want to get into too much biology, but I, I must uh, uh, let you think about it that even the DNA, that it's only four letters, can have a more uh, elaborate model. OK, done. Uh, so uh, there are, now we are moving into uh, just one word about the algorithm, just to, so you know the, the name. The NW is the global alignment only. The Smith-Waterman, which is based on this, it's a global or local. And the BLAST, which is heuristic that I'll demonstrate for you is the most common one. But again, those are two really uh, perfect uh, result. They, I mean, you do it 100 times, you'll get the same. So those are really fixed algorithm that is uh, deterministic. And those are heuristic. So not always you'll get the best result. So you know that you, you, you lose something by running BLAST, just to mention this. So uh, I, uh, Maybe I'll skip this, although I'll just say it. Do you know what's a dot, dot matrix, dot plot? Uh, I really like it. I think I'm the only one in the world that like it. But uh, I think it's very informative, and it's very old. So I, I won't spend uh, uh, much time on this. But when you have two sequences, two sequences, you can do this uh, type of analysis. For example, this is the same sequence for against the same sequence. And every time that you see a perfect image, you put a dot. Every time that you don't see, you don't put a dot, right? So you build up a matrix of dots. And when you look at this, you can tell me quite a lot about this protein. Although this is a DNA, let's say. Although I didn't say anything. Why is that? Because it's a perfect way to see local repetition, to see local repetition, to see uh, 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 a very nice, you know, the, 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 the diagonal is by definition, right? But you see a lot of features in this protein. Now try to, to take this and do a local alignment with something. You might lose all this information. So I like it because I think if you are interested in your protein, just do it once and you learn quite a lot. And this is another two proteins. And what you see here, what's this? Somebody can explain this? This is the same technology, dot plot. So you see a 
protein that is very, or DNA that is very nicely aligned. But what happened here? Exactly. So, so you, without saying anything, you understand what happened, which I like. So, so yeah, it's inversion because this was flipped. So what was in this happened here, and what's in this happened here. So they were just flipped. So immediately you see it. So as a graphical person, I, I like it. So anyway, we move to protein. This is just a, a similar story for protein. There is no, I mean, the dot plots uh, fit to protein as well. So conservation is a very important uh, wording in the word of protein conservation because uh, uh, we are talking about similarity, but as I mentioned before, there could be a very different outcome to this similarity percentage. So it's not enough. So uh, that, that's I hope. And it's all about, when we do a alignment of proteins, it's all about the feature of the amino acids. They are not identical. They are not just purine pyrimidine, let's say two classes, but there are 20 classes, in which here they are color coded quite naively by basic, acidic, polar, non-polar, and so on. But the more correct view is this one. I like this slide because it's capture a little bit of the complexity of t telling us what are the amino acids related to. So <coughs> as you can see by this mess, that uh, uh, indeed those four are hydrophobic, but this, those, those uh, are hydrophobic, but this one, for example, that is hydrophobic in some situation, in other situation, it's a negative, it's a, it's a basic uh, residue like lysine and arginine, okay? Depend on the pH. So, some, some, so now I really uh, confuse you. Not only the property, the biochemical property, it's the condition that they are sitting here. So for example, the proline, which is rather small like all the others, but it's a very unique one. Why it's isolated? Because in a certain situation of structure, it can break any structure that is, it is within. So that's dramatic, right? So we cannot just say that there is one dimension that we can uh, you know, use coloring and that's it. Okay, so, so remember this. And this type of polar, hydrophobic, small, large, and uh, unique, for example, cysteine appears twice here, once here and once here. Depends, so there is not 21 amino acids here, but the, the cysteine is a very, very different if it's in bridge or not bridged. So it, all its characteristic is different and so on. So there is a lot in this graph, okay. So in order to capture this complexity, in the uh, 80s uh, uh, there were few matrices, we call them substitution matrices. The two important ones are Blossom and Palm. Uh, that are used to capture this complexity. And the way to do it was unfortunately and very, very naive, not by thinking about the source of amino acids, but just by doing very, uh, uh, I would say, naive but informative test. And the test was the following. Let's take, uh, I'll, 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 I'll skip the details here, but the idea is to uh, the following. If we take a set of proteins, ungapped, okay, so we skip the gap story that we spend half an hour on it, not ungapped. We take them and say those are really, really good alignment. Why? Because no one will, ask, will say differently. They take the block of this very good alignment and then move one amino acid at a time and say, what is the probability of this amino acid to change along all those sequences that are related, strongly related, not partially related. So when I say very related, in terms of PAM, it was 1% changes, nothing. Like 99 point, so, so almost nothing changed, right? And then you build up the basis for the biological, that, that's the PAM and the blossom, they do it a little bit differently, but the idea is really to find the probability that this happened by chance, or this happened by some, su not surprise, by, by, but it's beyond the observation, doesn't be, cannot be explained just by chance. 
So what does it mean by chance? Because each amino acid has its own percentage, you know, like frequency. So a very, very common a, a amino acid, maybe by chance, just happen, right? So all the idea of the palm and blossom was, again, just to summarize, to take something that we know for sure that they are good, to build up the block, to count, and to do the statistics behind, and uh, uh, just to say that uh, in the palm, for example, all the palm that we are using till today are based on, 100, on, on 1,500 proteins, pieces of proteins. Many of them are very important. Insulin, histone, ubiquitin, you know, like those. But that's it. And from that, that on, till now, 50 years, no one changed it. So it, it's good enough. It captured quite good the, the, the story. So this is uh, uh, the, the palm. And what, again, uh, um, palm, palm is going by the numbers. So just so you won't uh, uh, be confused. When we say palm 2050, it means that you take the initial matrix of 1% and you put it, you multiply the, the matrix 250 times. But it's, it's strange. Now, now I see that it bothers you for good reason. Because what, how, what do you mean 250% changes? It seems div uh, weird. However, think about it that amino acid or nu nucleotide can be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what you see here is a summary of a lot of changes that many of them you don't see. So the, the, the high number, it just means that it went through more steps that you think of. But that's a comment. Uh, um, what I see, what, what's important to note is that even in the di diagonal, which is A remain A, R remain R, the differences in the number, in the scoring, is dramatic. For example, Y, which is tyrosine, to stay with the tyrosine, you get a, a, a score of 10. So even to stay on a tyrosine, you get a score of 10. But to uh, stay with alanine, you just get a score of 2. OK? So again, there is a lot behind it. I'll skip it. But I want you to understand that the, the, uh, it's all here positive. But in the matrix, there are a lot of negative, so that there is a payment in the scoring system. And uh, this is the palm. Uh, I'll, I see that uh, I, I, I want to go on. So PAM to, to, uh, 250 are 250 mutation per 100 amino acids. So this is what I explained before. Um, and th this is uh, one word about the PAM. And then on the blossom, again, the blossom is a different algorithm. Start similarly in the, in the thinking, but this time they didn't took uh, uh, sequences that are so aligned but only, let's say, 60% aligned, 62% aligned. So they are more diverse, but they are blocked. So they are not really a full length, but they are just a small block. And each block is done, and for each block, you calculate how much I see it versus what I expected to see. So it's an odd uh, uh, ratio. That, uh, and, and basically, it's try to get this evolutionary story that I started my talk with. So again, if you take uh, Blossom, you'll see that the, the same uh, uh, applies. The numbers are very different. And again, uh, as you can see, to change C to C, to, to keep C to C, you gain nine points, which is a lot. And to change C to E, you missed four points. And as you can see, the diagonal is not identical in numbers. So each amino acid has its own probability. OK. So this is the Blossom. And till today, we are using Blossom 62, which uh, the, the number 62 means the sequences were 62% identical uh, among them. Uh, just as a comment, I can say that about five years ago, somebody, I don't know why, went and tried to recover Blossom and found that there is a mistake, a bug in the algorithm. He fixed it, and nothing works anymore. So this is the right. So whenever you have a bug, keep it. Because sometimes it's really, and I'm talking about 40 years of using really million times this. Uh, uh, and the blast 
that we'll talk in a minute is based on this, on this mistaken 62. But it, it was, now there are a lot of, um, you know, uh, the numbers, for example, are integer. What does it mean, integer? So you understand that there is some, some uh, decision that had to be made, but uh, this mistake is helping us somehow. Okay, so this is the blossom. Again, I told you, in this case, remember that it was uh, te 10 for the tyrosine. In this case, it's only seven. Okay, so, and for example, the tryptophan get a very high score of 11. So to keep tryptophan is really, you get a good point. Do you know, do you have a feeling why? Give me two, three exa uh, explanation. Why keeping tryptophan, which is the highest of all, is really good for, uh, is really impressive. Get 11 point, I mean, to get the 11 point, you have to work with many alanine, you know? <laughs> it's not a, it's, it's a good currency, so. What's going on there? Okay, so it's less codon, but just to, to give you an example, a methionine, for example, which is five, it's about the same percentage, or cysteine. So this is, it's, it's, of course, it's included the internal frequency. It's a rare one, but what, what else? Give me one biological, one technical explanation, and we can go on. Tryptophan. Good intuition. So uh, uh, Joshua tell us that it's easy to, to change. So if you kept it, it means something. But I can add, it's good, but I can add another one. Any change in tryptophan will give you stop codon. So that's bad for you. So that's a very nice uh, comment because it means that you, you, you must keep it. It's not a, a choice. Moreover, it's a very unique one. And for example, the now biolog biology a little bit, the core of proteins in terms of folding often is based on tryptophan being the core, being the glue, the, 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 the one that everything, you know, uh, so something that is really essential for starting the folding story. So this is an important one. And, and there is a lot of beautiful biology behind this, but I'll skip this. Okay. so. How do we use the most appropriate scoring method? So it's like cookbook. You like uh, your chef, and you go by your chef. But there are some rule of thumb. And uh, of course, what I can say is that the, the, the rules are written here. But I can just tell you, if you are looking for something that is remotely uh, a, a, a very far evolutionary, try to use blossom that are below 62 because you want the model to, tra to be trained or to be learned from a more remote sequences. If you have something that are very close, go to Blossom 80. So play with this. That's one uh, element. Blossom is a good one. Palm is a, is a less, is a more, let's say, uh, formulated uh, uh, fo format, but it's uh, less uh, appropriate uh, to, and this is the Blossom and Palm. Uh, you'll look at it later. So just to say that there is a correlation between the two. So when you say blossom 45, it's equivalent to, ah, uh, there, there is a, to palm, it, it's a mistake, to palm 80. So there is this, and palm one, oh, sorry, sorry. Palm, uh, blossom 45 and palm 250 are equivalent, and blossom 80 and palm one are equivalent. So use those number as a guideline, okay? When, when you are looking for a more diverse and more. Now, just uh, to say that uh, there are a lot of limitation in this uh, analysis of uh, using those substitution matrices. The one obvious one is that we assume that evolution rate is identical, which is nonsense, of course. We assume that the percentage of uh, amino acids are equal, you know, in the, which is, again, very different. Let's say even intuition of biology, let's say membrane proteins are very different from non-membrane, and you use them as if they are in one pool, and there are all those limitations still worth uh, 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 using uh, those uh, methods. Now, the, the, uh, I want to move to the database search, the last uh, uh, part. So once we understand, I think, fairly deeply what's the 
pairwise alignment, what's the dot plot, what's the, the, the local versus uh, and the scoring method. Now, the real challenge is to use it versus the database. Now, the database, you are by now knows that they are huge. And it's very important to do the right decision when you search your protein versus the database. And uh, um, the, the database homology search is really, again, it can be done on DNA, on, on a protein. I'll talk about protein. I want to uh, skip this. But uh, uh, you have to understand the only things that I believe is ma matter is to understand what is my chance to find such a sequence with such a score within this database. Th that's the most important part. Why? I mean, it's important the score per se. We discuss it. It's important the, the, the algorithm. But in the end, you want to understand that what you just saw, it's not by chance. And of course, if the database are huge, is it better for you or worse in this term? In the, in the worse, right? You pay a lot. So this is comment number one. Think ahead of time to which database you want to search. If you are looking for a homolog in yeast, search from all fungi or whatever, or all yeast. But don't go, so depends. Be very sharp on the question you have to ask because the database will kill the result. Just the decision of what database. This is important. OK. Second, I just want to say that there is beautiful uh, help system to all of those algorithms, to s people that really want to understand. There is really very good uh, in uh, NCBI a tutorial for BLAST, uh, really explaining what's behind it. I don't have the time to go, and I am sure that many of you uh, went through this. But uh, uh, it's fast, very fast. The implementation is really phenomenal, really now. It's a heuristic, as I mentioned. The algorithm is the most used one in biology, in uh, bioinformatics, in biology today. Blast become, I'm blasting, blast, so become a verb, a very important verb. Uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the word blast is for basic local alignment search tool, which is a family of many or several uh, basic blast, gap blast, psi blast, and so on. What I'm saying is that there is a variation in the blast, but for this discussion, we only talk about the uh, uh, blast, the basic blast, or the gap blast. And the idea is really to get a short, high-scoring similarity region, which we call, just for the term, a heat. OK, blast heat. That's the terminology that we are using. So look at the example. This is two sequences that we want to score. So this scoring is by PAM 120, <coughs> plus this, that, uh, it gets this number. And this is the high scoring sequence pair. In this kind, it's a pair. So <coughs> word is a small set of, a, a, for this uh, matter, let's say amino acid. Where word pair is pair of word in the same length. And score of the word pair is what I show you. So just for the terminology. Now, as I said, BLAST is a very good tutorial. There are few BLAST that are all important. This is BLAST, and it's in this list you have a, 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 the explanation. The query and the database. Now, you have all combination. For example, can somebody explain to me what does this mean, BLAST X? It's written, but I want you to understand the difference between your query and the search of the database. You start. It's, it's written here. You start with the nu nucleotide, and you try all six frames to find within the protein base database what is the best hit. You understand? So why is it important, BLAST-X, which is <laughs> the, the most used BLAST in biology? Why is that? Exactly. Because most of what we do today is really breaking the product to bits and pieces, and that's it. So you lose the what's five prime, what's three prime, because and and this is the what what save you. Okay, so this is quite common, um, and you have T blast N, which you start with a protein and you try to find the nucleotide, the six frame backwards. 
Now, this is hard, right? <laughs> because you start in the protein, already lo lost a lot of the information. So this is mainly done for peptides, because the combinatoric will kill you. But you have also T blast X, start with the nucleotide, go to nucleotide, and so on. So this is the naming. And uh, the speed, <coughs> it's very fast. I just wrote the speed. Blast is the fastest, then the most, let's say, uh, deterministic uh, algorithm. Uh, some of them are very slow. So, but but uh, the idea, maybe I'll skip this. I'll just give you the intuition. The idea of the blast, because it's a heuristic, is to find a word, let's say, of three amino acids, and to search it along all your sequence. And you, you decide that you don't want more than specific score. The score is by the Blossom score, as we just talked. So you say, something below 13, I don't want to look at it. So you throw it away. So you end up, let's say, with 20 or 10 hits, I mean, word hit, and then you try to extend left and right. If you gain something, great. If not, forget it. So it's a very fast heuristic, but it doesn't provide you necessarily the best result. OK? So that's the idea, yes. OK, so, so, so now it's the implementation. So you need ungapped first to, to extend. And then, so maybe this didn't work, but this and another place worked. And that become to, to be the, the seed for the heat. So it's a little bit uh, like this. And there are a lot of uh, tricks in the implementation. For example, the word can be two and not three. The word can be six and not. OK, so, so there are, a, a, OK, that's I already told you. And do we have three minutes for a demonstration? OK. So now I want the, the uh, first of all, they changed the format of BLAST just uh, three months ago. But to people that are so uh, addicted, they said, OK, go to the old one if you feel better there. But they did uh, something quite nice. So I'll show you in a, in a minute. But the idea is just uh, the framework, because I don't have much of the time. So you plug in sequence in a faster format that you know. It could be a faster format. It could be a name. It could be ID, because they are fairly flexible. Not entirely flexible, but it's OK. And you, you, you use it as a plus. And then they said, do you want the entire sequence or just from here to there? And that's a very important feature. Why is that? I'll give you immediately my blast art artist uh, view. Because I like. I, I did really millions of blasts in my life. I always like to say, before I even have to think, let's run the first half and the second half. If I, say I get the same result, OK, I'm, I'm safe. So, so there are all kinds of uh, small tricks. Why? Because what's the chance that I'll get the same heat if I took the left side and the right side? Only if the, the, the sequence is OK and it was not trapped because of some local mistakes, right? So those are tricks that you can use online. You don't have to plan ahead of it. So that's very, very nice. And the second thing that uh, is important, it gives you also graphical view in colors. This is the length of the alignment, of the local alignment. Blast is a local alignment. This is the other one. This is again, and this is with a lower quality. And the black uh, usually are just uh, the noise. So this is the blast result just graphically. The, the result, we discuss it about those scoring that it comes with. So this is, you know, already. It tells you the index. Swissprot P50553. This is the name of Swissprot. Swissprot always start with a few letters underlying and the organism. And then you have the long uh, uh, name of it. And immediately the score, it's a bit score. It's a, it's, it's a normalized score. I, I don't want to get. And then the value that I mentioned before. It's called E value. E value is the expectation value in terms of statistics. So it happened by E minus 76 that it happened by chance. And that's important. So the E value is super important, is the expectation in this data set. You move to a different data set, it calculates by the chance differently. So you'll get a different E value. 
and e-value are very useful. Okay. Last, uh, 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 I have some uh, clue. So this is a rule of a thumb to use of a, as I said, uh, and maybe I'll do it and uh, that's it. This is for next uh, class. So let's try to, to move uh, to some kind of a, uh, let's do it, uh, to a blast. With this, so with this, you open it. Okay, let's do the blast. Okay, so you you get the the blast, uh, uh, and let's do something uh, very fast just to give you. I'm sure that many. So this is just the interface, as we say, nucleotide blast or all the other type of blast. Let's go to protein blast for this uh, uh, illustration. Can you see it uh, good enough? Okay, so here uh, you, you can put a faster, but uh, let's, uh, let's uh, do something, uh, I don't know. Let's see if it, uh, it will, if not, uh, okay, let's see. So le let me, while, while it's uh, running, let me say what, what you have here. You have the, the sequence that you put. You have a job. You, know, you can say, I, I did this, so you have a follow-up. You have this form two, as I mentioned before, right? So the, the form two is, uh, is uh, important, as, uh, as I said. You have here, um, as I said, the, the old blast and the new blast just feel, feel good if you want to go to the new one or to the old one. And then this is very important. You have to decide which are the database that they build it as a menu for you to choose. So I can give you, so as you can see, you have the non-redundant NR protein sequences, which is basically the non-redundant like in Tremble, everything that is non-redundant, which is a good starting point if you know nothing about anything. However, if you are more courageous, you can go to RefSec protein, but RefSec, as I mentioned, it's a decision. We discussed quite a lot about RefSec, but it's a very good decision. We can have also model organism. Model organism is a set that they built for you, which include, so maybe you believe that you work on your model organism, but they do not believe that this is a model organism. So you need to know what's the landmark of model organism which is Drosophila, uh, yeast, and so on. So they have a list of uh, not, not very long, by the way. You have a Swiss port, which I said already, it's a highly curated, very good one. You have uh, also PDB, which is, I think it's the best to start with. PDB is a very uh, diluted and, and not cover everything. But if you have a heat to PDB, you have it. So it's a, it's a matter of uh, gaining but of course, if you do go to the non uh, to the NR, and you find they'll, they'll tell you that it's a PDB. So if there is a PDB, but this is a very fast one. PDB doesn't have that man that many, and immediately it runs and say, "Whoa, these two structures are similar." Okay, you 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 know what the protein is doing. So it's a very big jump. Okay, metagenomic and transcriptomic. And then you, 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 you have to choose the algorithm. And the algorithm, it's either a very quick one. The quick, I remember that I mentioned the blood, the one that you look for a long word. So this is a very fast. If you are looking for really this sequence somebody gave you and tell you, you forgot from what organism, you just do the quick one and you have it. So, so it's a very uh, useful. We'll, we'll not talk about the side blast because uh, this is more of a multiple sequence alignment. And you do a blast. More important for this discussion is the algorithm parameter. Most of this, uh, uh, my talk, was about this element that are hidden. Why it's hidden? Because they say, if you don't know anything, don't worry, we thought it about it for you. However, you'll see if you, for example, put a very short protein, they said, sorry, you have to change the default. So they, they, they'll tell you, 
your protein is 20, you cannot use this set of parameters. But this uh, set of parameters are super important. Why is that? Because you can decide if you want 100 uh, result or you want 2,000 or 20,000. You can say uh, also that you want the expectation, the E value to be 10 or to be 1, you know, a quicker one or whatever, 1. You can say the word size to be any of the one that uh, we discuss and so on. And the blossom, you can change the blossom as we talked. You can change this, right? You see this? The extension penalty, the, the opening and extension. Now, how can you guess? You cannot, right? You, you don't know. You don't have the feeling. But if I change the blossom to a more relaxed, they will change the default here for me. So it's a very easy way to learn what does it mean very conserved and very unconserved. Now, the intuition is also, I don't have the time, to, but you, you'll get the intuition as well. So if things are very close, you don't want to let the opening uh, uh, to, to be able, to, to, to be possible at all. So this is another two very important uh, things that we didn't discuss, low complexity and masking of uh, area that are repeated. Sometimes, and this was a, a big, big issue of BLAST, they were trapped in local sequence that are repeated. And you always get the same repeats because those are very abundant and so on. So they said, do you want me to mask non, uh, uh, from, from information theory, no, those sequences that are very, uh, let's say, repeatable, like a, stri a string of uh, serine, which is the length of 100. It will, of course, give you patches of serine, but it doesn't tell you much. So you can skip this, which is very nice. So what I'm saying is that it's a really very nice uh, uh, outcome. And the, the, uh, this is the, the result. So this is the uh, protein that I uh, uh, put. And they say, OK, you want now to do, this is a new stuff that they add, filter result. Usually, you get thousands of results. You don't know what to do. What next? So they tell you, OK, do you want only results that are of E value be above this? So immediately, it's a subset of your result, which is very nice and never was there, which is a, a, a nice addition. And the other addition that they did, which is a, I kind of like, they don't show you anything but the list with the E value, the percentage, the query coverage in terms of length, the total score, and the maximal score. And they, want you, uh, they say, do you want it graphically or not? So they don't force you to go graphically. You can go graphically, and then you see the graph. In this case, uh, it's a very strong one. You can get uh, to, to the description again. And now, if you want to look at this, you can go and load it. And then they'll show you all the details that you, we used to, to have, which is uh, uh, the, the, the score, the expected, the identity, the very, very detailed. And they tell you why they found it as a, which is nothing, right? They found this. I can't remember what I even put there. But you can see that it's a very small uh, sequence, and so on. I, I, th I think, by the way, I wrote the name, SIT, and they use it as if it's a blast. So S-Y-T, RET. I wrote SIT RET. And I forgot to do the the to, to mention that it's not a sequence. So they thought the sequence is S Y T R A T. And they did a beautiful uh, search. So the search is on C S Y <laughs> and so on. Okay, but uh, this is a peptide of six. They shouldn't they should warn me that it's a uh, garbage, but they didn't. But wha what I'm saying is that it's a very, very powerful and you can see you can put your last name and they'll find something and uh, of course and uh, or your first name so so this is uh, uh, done instead of, uh, and then you can see that it's a very very well uh, uh, and fast and excellent and you can move also from each which is nice from each of the finding to the uh, you know to the resource so so it's also well connected and I think I'll stop here because we had uh, Quite a <laughs> dense uh, class. Okay? Say a lot. Question? There are a lot. Uh, 
it, it's a lot of experience. I mentioned it like it's a art. There are a lot of rules that were there, but the default are not bad at all. Just think about the question and the database to start with, as a start. Okay? That's it.